<laughs> Hi guys! Today in this video I wanna show you what I scored on the Wallapop, <laughs> which is my new favorite, uh, let's say, eBay kind of uh, website. So, uh, you know guys, uh, in a second video of the, the CNC machine, whatever, we had some issue with my really lovely <laughs> original German tomb uh, caliper, yeah, let me, let me show you the beauty. So this is the beauty. And uh, we had some issue with that and I see, maybe you can see from this direction, yeah, but definitely uh, this has some kind of curve. So I think this is really out of uh, specs. So let me close it back to the zero. And it's already on 0 0.1, yeah? But if I'm running really fast, then this is what's happening. So it's a really typical behavior of uh, these uh, Chinese uh, uh, calipers. But this one actually working really well. So this is sold by the tomb in Germany. I hope you can see it, yeah? You can see it. And this is stainless. I used this one for many years on construction sites uh, to do, you know, like uh, measure the rebar uh, diameter before I put the certification on a, on a concrete and uh, measure car parts, you know, like uh, diameter of tubes, whatnot. So this is my uh, toolbox uh, caliper and I think it's a little bit bent and broke even. So it's the time to send uh, this guy to the retirement <laughs> home or I will keep this one in my uh, toolbox because uh, let's be honest guys, uh, for 28 euro, this is what I paid like almost 10 years ago, yeah. And it's still uh, working, still operate. Um, but uh, unfortunately, in a second video of this uh, CNC, Upgrading is made a kind of mistake, so I undercut uh, my material and we, we had some issue with, uh, with one of the toolpaths because of uh, the missing precision. So, end of the story, uh, I recommend this one. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, so 10 years, 20 something euro uh, on construction sites with car repair task and all these crazy stuff and it's still running, so I guess I guess it's okay, yeah. So, uh, if you if you just a newbie and a starter in any kind of uh, industry, I think this is a good uh, starting point. I don't know why, but today he don't want to show me this uh, <laughs> error. So, what's the issue with this kind of uh, Chinese calipers? Of course, they're not made like a Mitutoyo or something uh, Starrett or something. So. So the scaling system inside under this uh, gray plastic is using a capacitive whatever solution. So there is a, a PCB running under this one with a very simple uh, piece of uh, capacitors like a, like a very tiny lines. And this is how the, the CPU is counting the position. So if you're working fast or the humidity is changing, it can affect your measurements, even the, the level of the battery. So if the level of your battery is a little bit lower than it should be, this will go really crazy. So that's the issue with this kind of uh, Chinese uh, calipers. But for a starter or for uh, really dirty projects and uh, hobby for repair your motorbike or uh, not the engine, yeah? <laughs> I'm winning, replace uh, uh, screws and bolts or whatever. This, this is a good one. So, I learned in this video I need to upgrade my metrology here in this place where I know, not in my studio and in my garage. Of course, over there I have all sorts of uh, crazy metrology stuff, but here uh, on this construction field I have almost nothing. So, I started to look on the, the Wallapop, which is the uh, same like uh, uh, eBay. And I looked uh, for uh, Mitu Toyo Metrology tools. And I said for myself, okay, if I find something uh, second hand or let's say or half price or whatever, I will be okay, I will buy it. Sometimes you can find really cool stuff on eBay or on Craigslist. And here in Europe, in Spain, this Wallapop is, looks to me, it's a really decent place. 
So uh, I scored this one on dirty chip, like uh, around half of the listed uh, price, yeah? So even on the RS Online, you can find decent and very good uh, uh, Mitutoyo Metrology tools for dirty chip. I I'm telling you, it's like uh, I, I was completely amazed uh, the price of the RS Online. So I almost pressed the button before the guy answered to my question. You know, because all the time when you're dealing with the second-hand units, you, you have to know the story, what's the story behind. So why I'm sharing this with you guys, I'm not uh, a big expert on MeToToyo and fake MeToToyo tools, because there is a lot of fake MeToToyo tools, of course. So I want to ask you guys what you think about this score, what you think? This is original Mitu Toyo or this is some kind of copy? So first what you have to check on the box is the bottom of the box. Make sure you have this original made in Japan stamp. So the quality of the letters and uh, the stamp is just, is just really Japan. <laughs> Another one in some times uh, you can see the injection mold point, which are really, really something really sophisticated, really high-tech Japan molding style. And there is some kind of like a rubin or diamond uh, shape. I hope you can see it. This looks to me really, really original. A box at least uh, original. So let me go to this uh, logo here on the front. If you have a look on on uh, this part, all these small lines, it looks like when you do an aluminum sanded surface on some metal products, so this is what they use to do the stamping, eh? I think it's beautiful. I think it's absolutely original. And look at the structure of the surface, yeah? And it's really hard. And it's, uh, it has this uh, black like a, like a carbon. I cannot uh, explain otherwise. It looks... Uh, no, I already put something on it. <laughs> So it's, uh, it's black, yeah? And this is the structure from millimeters, like three or four millimeters. Yeah, iPhone is doing very good job on this one, yeah? Uh, and I don't know what are all those uh, molding stuffs. And this looks to me original, yeah? So, okay, so I think the box is okay. So let me open the box now and let's see what is inside because this was my second surprise on this gas station where we met uh, with this guy. He came with his motorbike and I came with my one, so this is how we met. And when he opened the box, I just completely shocked when I saw this caliper is actually uh, in original plastic bag. So he never used it and uh, this was absolutely matched with the story. So uh, the other guy on YouTube, he, he said first what you have to check, make sure there is no battery installed in a caliper because in many Chinese copy they left inside some kind of creepy battery. Make sure uh, the buyer can check it on a Chinese market. So this one is absolutely has no battery in it, so when I move uh, the caliper is doing nothing. So, and it has this original, uh, very special, I don't know what kind of paper is this, but this actually, I looked on the internet, this has inside some kind of uh, special oil which has antioxidant uh, agent in it, but it's not uh, reacting with any metal, so this is some kind of really special paper, so anyway, so I ended up uh, with this caliper because this uh, is IP67 uh, protected, so I will have no problem with my coolant liquids or uh, the mist uh, coolant, whatever, when I will work uh, with this caliper on my CNC machine. So this is why I choose this one. And the second why why I choose this one, of course, this is a 200 millimeter long one. What we have inside in a box, of course, we have a certification, yeah, and we have other documentation, and we have the battery. So, so let me go to the next element, how you can check if your Mitutoyo caliper is original. Let me drop this one to here. So you should find inside not anything else, but only SR44 SV battery, yeah? And it's made by the Seiko. 
Hmm, should I look for other Seiko watches or something? Eh? This looks to me very, very, very nicely made uh, Japan <laughs> thingy. There is no Mishi Mushi printing, so the black is absolutely black. And it looks to me printed in a very professional way. So now I'm like uh, half a centimeter or five millimeter away from the paper. Look how big is the stamper, which is a really small one, yeah? So anyway, this looks to me a very original SL44 battery. Yeah, of course, in a Chinese knockoffs, you will find anything else. Aller, XR, whatever. Something, I don't know, what is this? So, this is the other yellow paper from really close, like less than a half inch. Look, uh, you can have a look on the structure of the paper. Amazing. And I think uh, the print quality is just, is just perfect, yeah? So this one looks to me like uh, they're not doing for every different type because this is a different type of caliper. So I don't know. Maybe this is a sign of this one is not original. Tell me if somebody is working in me to tell you, but it looks to me very, very original. And this one, it's a really high quality print uh, user manual. Let me go really close. You look at, ah, look at this print. So guys, I think it's 99.999% uh, original, yeah? So let me check the gray. It has to be done with the really small dots. And here it is, you can see. So the gray is not like a gray patch. It's constructed by very, very tiny, small black dots. So the user manual looks to me absolutely original and even the sound, it's not uh, European sound, it sounds uh, like uh, these toys on the Japanese market, yeah? This uh, dragon song. So let me go now to the certification, uh, a little bit closer. So since uh, one guy said on some forum on the internet, uh, the Mitutoyo stopped the method to, to put the individual signatures on each certification for basic uh, calipers. They're doing it only for really high-end uh, metrology stuff like uh, this crazy micrometer, laser, whatever, uh, really industrial, really expensive stuff. So for the uh, daily calipers, they stopped the the individual signature but how the the certification is going so the guy is actually this guy so in my case it's uh, uh, sir uh, t shinohara and this is his signature we can look up after him no on our <laughs> internet so he dropped this paper into a very special printer and based on his measurements the computer of course printing all this uh, numbers on it, so all the measurements, and then, of course, on a final moment, is also placing his signature. Now, if we have a look really close on this paper, it's definitely some kind of high quality, but desktop printer. So you can see each individual pixels, and it looks to me, yeah, even you can see the lines uh, like in a cross direction, yeah? So have a look on the M. So you can see the lines, how it's running uh, in a printer, yeah? So I think uh, this certification is absolutely original. I have only one issue with this one. I have no clue about the date of the certification. So I think uh, the story of this, uh, how the certification is made, I think it's a little bit I'm not sure, so where is uh, my date? Eh? I have no date at all. Maybe somebody can calculate uh, from this serial number. But anyway, have a look on the edge of the paper. Yeah, man, you can see, but we, we have like a really clean cut. But then we have this uh, shred line, yeah? So, I don't know. If somebody know Mitutoyo certification and tools and original papers, tell me. I think nothing wrong with this certification paper. Looks to me very original. Yeah, I will tell this one many more times. Ah, I find a, a very small detail. Maybe this will have somebody. Let me show you from really close. So, 
the segment of the printer test, or I don't know what is this line, it's almost absolutely perfectly matching with this shred line. And it's all over. So here is uh, your next one. Here is the other one. And here is this one, which is again, almost perfectly matching with the shred line. I don't know what it's called. I, I think it's shred line, yeah? So this is the other uh, very small detail about this paper. So this one on the back side of the paper, not on the front. Anyway, enough from papers, yeah? And the biggest moment, we will open this original uh, Mitutoyo plasticky thingy. And now we will arrive to the next point about original Mitutoyo metrology tools. When I will open, I have to smell like a, almost like a, some really special wood something smell. So, so definitely, yeah, this paper, so this paper has this uh, woody thingy smell, this OG <laughs> paper. So let me go closer to the caliper itself. Yeah, yeah, guys, I, I think this is absolutely original. So the next thing what you have to check on your caliper, the guy said on YouTube, is make sure the print quality and the color of this blue whatever is screen printed or is not using any kind of digital printing technology so you cannot see individual color pixels so you must see only one color and you even can see the microstructure of this uh, glazed aluminum whatever part and this is the next one you should see only rivets not uh, screws which is going to the other side and the other side has to be rivets too, and it is. And uh, the installation is just perfect. So everything is parallel, yeah. And everything is really nice. No rust, look at this. And, and we have some kind of grease on it. Look at this. This looks to me really original. <laughs> Japanese grease, maybe they put here a little bit more, but they should, but anyway. Uh, there is no glue on the side of this uh, plastic cover part and all the letters, all the numbers is just beautiful. I think this caliper is original, so if any Chinese company or manufacturers want to do this uh, level of the quality for the copy, maybe it's better if they starting their own brand and uh, they're just entering to the, the market, yeah? So anyway, the next one what the guy said to check is how smoothly is moving. It's definitely not smooth at the moment, but after a couple of yeah, guys, yeah. So definitely I feel some greasy thingy is just uh, spreading. Probably the grease from here. But anyway, it's uh, smooth. Let me close a little bit this uh, locker screw. And then it should not move even with the tiniest uh, force. So now it's fully open and I'm just closing really softly. I, I didn't apply any force on it. And yeah, it's, yeah, it's not moving at all. I, I have to really pull hard. And the next one, let me check this uh, locker screw. It should not uh, come off from the caliper at all. When you ask it, no, it's not coming out. So. I cannot uh, remove it without damaging the caliper. So this is how it looks from close. Yeah, it looks very Japan, <laughs> let's be honest. And uh, what else? Nothing, we should, uh, we should drop the battery in it now. In this case, with this uh, IP67 Mitutoyo calipers, you should find inside a serious uh, rubber ringy thingy Insulation, isolation against the water. So I don't know what's going on here, but we definitely have to use something. Yeah, they, they, they gave me this tool for open this uh, compartment. So we should not damage with, oh guys, 
Okay, I got it. I got it. Let me show it to you really close, but definitely there is a tons of engineering is going on here, yeah? So first, uh, when you turn this head, it's doing nothing, so like a half a turn is just turning, and then start to lift up automatically, so you don't have to hit it or kick it or nothing, and here is uh, this uh, uh, insulation ring on it, with a tiny bit of silicone grease, you can see, yeah, definitely, guys. Japanese people know what they're doing, eh? <laughs> they're serious, even on this very small... And there is a one. Look at these details. This letter one is like two millimeter high, something like this, and this looks perfect. And even the molding on the center, so it's not anywhere else, it's exactly on the center. Should I read the, the user manual, yeah? <laughs> Definitely. So I have to put this one here and use this tool to turn it. So now I got a, a blinky blinky display. I don't know what to do now. So what now? Bang! Yeah, I had to hold my finger on this button. So here it is. Let me show you the display from really close. And this is the quality of the LCD. Yeah, guys, this is definitely not Chinese, yeah? It looks like a Seiko watch. <laughs> so there is a lot of extra digits on this display. So probably they're using this display for uh, many other products, who knows? But definitely for 200 millimeter, we need a lot of uh, digits. So let me open it fully to 200 millimeter, yeah. yeah. Bang. And here it is. So now the real test of uh, the Mitu Toyo Absolute uh, Caliper system. No matter how fast you move these things, yeah, it should always come back to zero when you zero it out. So let me do a smooth one, really slow movement, and then get really crazy, yeah? So it doesn't matter what you're doing with this, it should always come back to the perfect zero. Oh, yeah, it's zero. Maybe I pressed a little bit too hard. But anyway, I should uh, clean this surface first. And there is other detail. What the guy said we have to check, it's here on this end. So here we should see a serious uh, uh, surface grinding uh, uh, marks. And uh, so this uh, edge here is not uh, precision surface grinded, so it's just grinded. But this one, it's absolutely precision grinded, where you can see, eh? So definitely this surface has a different quality structure than, let's say, this one or anything else. And this should be true on other end too. So here everything should be perfectly lined up and uh, and uh, smoothly, very smoothly equalize with the surface grinder. Absolutely looks like, uh, maybe not. Maybe this one is using some kind of other, no, I, I see the surface uh, grinding, eh? You, you may, you can see, maybe, I just have too much uh, grease on it. So definitely. We have a precision grinded uh, surface, including the pin, yeah? So now the pin is just, look out and have a look. Yeah, it's grinded. So uh, the backside of the caliper from really close again. Ah, this is the next one, what you have to check. If you have a look on this uh, QR code, you should not see like smoogy, smoogy <laughs> thingy. You should see a perfect QR code and here it is. It's made from very small tiny dots and nothing smoogy about this one, yeah? So even the small cycles are just perfect or maybe here on this small trash bin, you can see it's, this laser can produce much more finer lines than these small cycles, yeah? 
So I think uh, I got an original Genion uh, Mitutoyo caliper for very, very small amount of money. I don't want to say you for how much because you will get crazy. But anyway, it's time for you to jump on a Wallapop and have a look on what you can find on a Wallapop. Yeah? <laughs> you just have to learn how to speak Spanish or use the, <laughs> the Google Translator and translate everything what you want to know. By the way, what I don't like about this uh, specific caliper only, I really miss the, the small rolly thingy. So this is definitely made for um, maybe for engineers, car repair masters who is on a really on a high level of quality. It's definitely not made for uh, for fine mechanic. Uh, uh, tool makers or something because yeah I really miss this rolly thingy here yeah I don't know what me to do thing like so the original price is about 360 she something something so it's definitely not a level of uh, a normal uh, car <laughs> repair guy yeah so I don't know what the heck uh, me to do you think like uh, the, why they remove this uh, I don't know. Anyway, so now we on 33. So if now I press this origin, I should get a zero. Uh, yeah. And now if I'm going back, I should see minus 33. Yeah. Exactly 33, zero, zero, zero. Beautiful tool. Let me tell you. So anyway, uh, in the manual I saying you have to use it carefully on the first days. And we have to apply some kind of... Uh, special uh, um, oil on it. Oh, I almost forgot. There is other very, very small detail about original Mitu Toyo calipers. Let me show you. Uh, it's here. There is no runout. So this uh, trench, we can call it trench, it's really deep. <laughs> so this uh, trench, is just ending here, so there is no cheap runout like uh, the Chinese are uh, mostly they're using this kind of milling machine, so which is going in this way. So on the end, you will see the runout of the the cutting tool. Yeah, here is not, so they're using this one, so like a end mill, like a pocket mill, and uh, after that they're doing some kind of. Uh, Grinding on it, you can see on the bottom, yeah, definitely. On the side, no, so on the side you can see the the bit, what is this, so the surface quality. Over there even you can see the pattern of the bit, yeah. But I don't know what they did with, with these uh, lines, how they did that. It's amazing. I have no clue how they did that lines over there. I'm not talking about this uh, circular lines because definitely this is uh, from the bit. The other lines which are running like, like a 45 degree, I don't know how they did this. Really, I have no clue. What kind of machine is going into this pocket and doing like, I don't know. Anyway, so this is the last uh, secret of uh, Mitu Toyo calipers. I think I got the original one. Uh, but anyway, I, I want to see your comments, yeah, uh, under this video. What you think? This is the original Mitu Toyo caliper, or I got a really, really, really high quality fake one. Eh? Well, what you think? Sorry if the audio is not good, but I'm shooting this one now under I'm editing the video. So this is the original label, yeah, on a box. So it looks really nicely really clear. And that's it. I just uh, forgot to share this one. Maybe next time I will invite you to hunt with me together on a Wallapop because that's the last week I scored something really unusual, something really beautiful. I still think on it to, to, to buy it or not buy it. One of my dream became true. <laughs> so anyway, if you want, just uh, left here a comment if you want to see more uh, Wallapop uh, huntings with me. Eh? Maybe we should do a live video huh? for hunting. I hope you guys enjoyed. See you next time. Bye. I think it's a beautiful. Oh my god, let me put it.
Beck. <lacht>